Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on today, wrap it up with a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's selection comes at us from Stuart. Raw black metal, apologies, with very lo-fi but deliberate production. Once you're attuned to the roar of it, there's so much beauty within. Trying to amp myself up for this. <laughs> Lo-fi, raw, black metal. Some of my favorite descriptions of music. Uh, joking aside, let's dive into this. We're looking at the band Black Leche. We're looking at the track Timeless Spectre from Banished from Time, which appears to be their 2017 album. Let's dive in. Let's see what's going on. Definitely taking some time to attune to this production. out of the chord progressions. The vocal melody is interesting.
very easy to get lost in the structure though having no accents in the drum work and having uh, a strong vagueness of bars and phrasings from the vocals means you really have to listen into what the guitars are doing and they're just not emphasized too much in the production. Those drum fills at the end of every four bars help to create some sort of punctuation, but if not for them, I think it'd be really difficult to keep track of where we're at in the in the bars and the phrases. See here, the progression is laid down a lot clearer. kicks interfere with the vocals and it puts a warble in the in the vocal sounds. go on to say that the guitars get a little bit out of sync here or maybe the drums I'm not sure who's rushing they line back up at the beginning of the phrase there are four bars but in between it feels like it's out of sync but it, it could also just be the muddiness of it the heavy reverb everywhere Reverb's also making it difficult to hear the, the pitch, the tone of the vocal melody. There are times when what comes through is really, it's really clear and provides like a clean melody. And other times where it just gets so muddy, it's difficult to tell what the pitch is and it introduces a bunch of dissonance. Right. 
for as long as this song is, we really don't do a lot with it. There's three drum patterns that we kind of work around, two of them sparsely utilized, focusing more, well, not even focusing more on, they basically act as halftime and then halftime of that, giving us slower versions of very similar styles to the fast stuff that we hear throughout most of this, the blast beats alternating that bass and snare. Um... We do have like five guitar riffs in here, but that's, I mean, on average, that means we're listening to each riff for two minutes, and I don't think the riffs are really that interesting. A couple of them, sure, the very first one we listened to that had a nice melodic flow to it, that was nice. The last one that had a little bit more melodic elements to it, that one was great too, but I think it was the second or third guitar riff that was just one note for three bars, and then on beat two of the fourth bar, it goes up to a new note for three beats and then comes back down. And that's it. It's a majority of this one note, maybe a chord, I honestly don't know, but one sound and then a higher sound and then back down. And yeah, that was, that was just not enough to carry that whole section. I didn't hear any bass in here at all. And then the vocals are... Well, for all I know, the vocals are totally linear throughout this. I just heard random yelling. Uh, sometimes those yelling, sometimes those yells had compression to them that I think they might have been doing some sort of harsh vocal. Sometimes they just sounded like a yell, very high and loud, high pitched and loud. Sorry. Um, and then allowing just this natural uh, tone to come out of the vocals and almost sounding like a, a desperate yell I, you know I, I don't use I didn't use that word haphazardly it, it sounds like somebody yelling and that presents a very specific idea to the song the atmosphere of it feels to me as if someone being tortured inside of a cave the sound of their screams reverberating off of the cavern walls and coming out the other side muddy and reverbery and kind of not clear just vague signs of pain if that's what they're going for i mean it works <laughs> uh if not though i mean i suppose there's other interpretations or other intentions that would work with the execution as far as theme but you know as usual i'm just there's parts of me that, that just have to ask, why? <laughs> um, and so I'm kind of left at this point without much to say here. Because I only picked up half of what was going on and most of that was hyper repetitive. The other half, I have no idea what was going on with it and I can't comment on it. So... I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> My skill set up here is to listen to music and pick stuff out of it. And you guys continue to give me music that I can't pick things out of because I can't hear what's going on. And I feel kind of bad about it because, you know, it does I don't think it makes for a good reaction depending on what you're coming. Oh, it doesn't make for good analysis. If you're here for a reaction, I, that might have been okay. I, some faces in there, I'm sure. I don't know. I do want to point out one thing, though. I mentioned that the guitars have some nice melodies to them. They are short four-bar loops, uh, but there is moving pitches to them. It creates something melodic, and I will say that at times when I can hear it, there is something beautiful in that guitar work. I also mentioned that at certain times I could make out specific tones coming out of the vocalist that I thought worked well with what the guitars were playing. Other times, due to maybe intonation issues or the way that the reverb began to overlap sounds, lots of dissonance. Some of that may have been production dissonance, some of that may have been composition dissonance, some of it may have been performance dissonance. I'm not sure where the dissonance came in, but there were some parts in here where the vocals appeared to line up with everything the guitars were doing uh, chordally. 
and they were some really cool ideas when things actually clicked into place. And so I had this thought early on in the song when some of these things started to click into place. I was like, actually, that was kind of cool. I think I even mentioned that too, that I enjoyed some of the guitar work at the beginning of the track. And there's just a part of me that thought this would probably be really great, maybe as a kicking off board, a foundation to a song, given that there really isn't a lot of movement to it at a lot of times. But maybe it could be a nice atmospheric track. I don't know. But it'd be really cool if I arranged this for strings or clean guitars or xylophones, marimbas, pianos. I don't know. Something where people could hear what was actually going on. Because you know, I've made this comment before. And y'all have like, some of y'all have let me know. Well, let me, let me the comment is... Why would you make music and then hide everything cool about the music where people can't hear it? I've said the same thing about vocals, too. You put all this effort into your lyrics, and then you stuff the vocals way down into the mix, and no one can even hear the cool stuff you're saying. And then on top of that, you're also growling. So, to me, it's not even really about effort. Some things you can build up the ear to hear, but there's also a lot of things that happen in metal where I don't think you would even be able to hear the words if you had the lyrics in front of you, where you would be able to hear the notes if you had the sheet music in front of you. The production on some of this extreme metal is just so dirty that details are completely lost uh, in, in, the, in the audio file itself. There's no way to get that clarity out of it. And... Um, you know, I've seen some comments, and I, I get it, right? The atmosphere is more important than the lyrics. The atmosphere is more important than the composition. And yes, from from that perspective, if I arranged this into a string quintet or whatever, it would be a very drastically different song because the production informs so much about what the song is. And like... I get that, but to me, very rarely do I think that uh, the atmosphere from production would be more important than the composition, because you can certainly achieve similar emotions from your audience with a different composition. I don't want to say that production is a shorthand to do it. Production is certainly a tool in a composer's toolbox, and it should be utilized to create stuff like this. <laughs> um, but I just, I don't think it's ever going to appeal to me, and I don't know that I'm ever going to develop an ear to understand it either. My only wish for this whole thing was I wish I could hear what was going on in here. And if I could in you know a different arrangement i would probably want that version more than this but i also wonder how flat it would be without any of the muddiness of the production because there is a lot of repetition in here and maybe it would make a cool atmospheric track but maybe it would also make something that's just foundation kind of gets boring over time because there isn't enough movement i would have to add something to it to turn it into a song to replace what the production was doing and filling out the the oomph of the track of giving it the the extra spice to turn it from uh, you know a demo to art like i mentioned production isn't something you can just disregard and it's very integral to this track i'd have to replace it with something and it would probably be melody if i was using totally clean instruments But, like I said, it would be a very different song at that point as well. An arrangement of it, capturing some similarities, but having to achieve others through a different means. Would it be better? No. Would I enjoy it more? Probably. Would I be able to tell you what's going on in it? Yes. <laughs> um, and so, I don't know. I enjoyed some of the different drumming ideas in here. Uh, I thought the use of clean and clean compressed vocals were a nice change of pace for black metal. 
but overall this really doesn't sound too different from a lot of the other stuff y'all have me listen to because I can't hear anything past the dang production. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can find some lyrics and then we're going to wrap this one up. There are not a lot of lyrics for 10 minutes of music where there's vocals in a lot of it. There's only like 20 lines, some of these only two words each. There must have been a lot of repetition in here, or maybe just holding out single syllables for a long time. If I could have heard any of the words, I might have had some answers to this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll stop bragging on it. It says, I hear their voices, 1,000 voices, whispering in my ear, pulling me to madness, to the verge, to death. Liberated by candles and burnt herbs, I escape to never return. At this point, I thought it might have had to do with mental illness. That doesn't seem to be the case, though, as we push forward. It says, uh, you know, we finished the last stanza. I escape to never return, dot, dot, dot. To be the master, not the servant. To roam between hidden ruins through nights of endless vigil. I belong to no place, to no era. I live in the past and the present, banished from time. I'm a timeless specter. I am one with the dark energies gathered in the shadows of time. And this made me think it might have been a supernatural thing. Maybe speaking about how somebody can transcend the element of time itself and begin to roam through all elements of time as he says living in the past and the present a timeless specter but i also wonder if it might have been well to piggyback on my initial idea that it was mental illness is suicide to become a specter to escape the mortal plane to exist beyond that he says i'm now one with the dark energies gathered in the shadows of time it's possible. I think you can read it from either angle, where one is a bit more metaphorical and one is a bit more surface level. At the beginning, though, he does seem tormented, driven to the verge of death by the voices. I think that works well with the tormented sound at the beginning. I had mentioned that it sounded like somebody being tortured in a cavern. The second half of the lyrics, wherever they happen to take place in the song, move into a very different angle. The production doesn't follow, so I guess we could read that element, that theme on the production and say there's some synergy there, but it doesn't run all the way through, so if that is the purpose of the production, it fails on the back half of the track. I think it's better just to not read into that too far and just perceive that it's supposed to be the way this sounds, regardless of what the lyrics are, and this is just a production they enjoy. I don't know. Those are my thoughts on Black Chiliche's Timeless Spectre. Let me know what you thought of this track. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on, Put your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives, all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here, you can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today, but I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to finish off this final week of July with a final... Uh, random Brumble song, just a random pick from my patrons, and some brand new music. I think it came out earlier this week, maybe the end of last week, something like that. And that'll do it. We'll have a uh, an album review on Saturday and a live stream on Sunday, and then I'll be out for two weeks. I'll come back in August and we'll kick it off with something. I don't know, we'll figure it out then. All right, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.